patriarchal culture? Oh yes, of course, my God. Who is not living in patriarchal culture? So how do I feel uh, to be part of this women's empowerment movement? Uh, I'm happy. I am content. I find meaning in my life. My parents consider belong to the royal families. My father especially thought very high of himself. In Indonesia, coming from the Javanese ethnic group family, then uh, you have more um, strict in following the gender division labor. These are a lot for boys, these are a lot for girls. You have long list of what is a lot and what is not a lot. My mother and my father both were teachers until in the mid of 60s to 70s, they both lost their jobs. And we became very poor. My father was missing for some years, taken by the military. And my mother was forced to survive with sick children. I don't have problem with my childhood. I was very happy child. Until when I was nine, I think, a man we called father, Baba, came to our life. A very stranger. He came back as a sickly person. He was struggling with her heart problem. And at the same time, I think he suffered psychologically, mentally, from, I, I don't know what it was, something that our family never talked about until today. He loved doing violence and definitely we, especially me as the youngest in the family at that time, uh, had to suffer a lot. My mother was a very strong person, but something I noticed that when our father came back, joining us, she could not refuse. I think I remember I asked her once, why are you so afraid of our father? Why can't you say no uh, to our father when, when he was saying something that was not right? Why can't you, you know, um, fight against him? Because you are such a strong person. I think I saw her. Sad. Yeah, something I... I think I... Couldn't understand. And that's why I... Uh, decided not to ask her again. Now I'm very emotional remembering her so I had to endure what was said by our father I had only 10 minutes uh, tolerance of being late coming home from school I was not allowed to join many different extracurricular activities uh, run by our school I was not allowed this, I was not allowed that, I was not allowed that, I was not allowed to join this, I was supposed to do this. Somehow I felt like my wings were being crippled by my own father. I was told not to laugh loud, I was told not to make sound while eating. I left the house when I turned 17. I, I couldn't bear anymore for all the violence that I had to endure from my father because when we were turning 17, we were considered mature. And so, I gained my independence. I had to stay under the bridge with street community. But I gained something that I thought I would never have experienced anymore. 
That was freedom. One example about how uh, a girl experience being discriminated against in patriarchal family and patriarchal society is that until today, a girl is coming second on education. In Japanese society, there are three things expected from a girl. That is called three ur. First ur is dapur. Dapur is kitchen. Second ur is sumur. Sumur is well, meaning all the cleaning things. And the third ur is kasur, meaning bed. Choosing life partner, my father thought that all his children, his girls, got to get life um, uh, partners, spouses that is equal. And our Japanese saying, you have to consider three things, popot, pepet, bibit. Bibit means you have to consider where that person from and if you are coming from a royal family you should also get somebody at least have a line in the in the royal royal family trees pepet means um she or he has to has his his or her own quality and popot mean uh, uh, he or she has to have a remarkable position something that is difficult to have my sister um, until now I think as the victim of that very crazy idea of having partners so she is staying unmarried until now you can control your heart with whom you are falling in love with but what about my education I finished, luckily, um, until postgraduate. In the third year, um, and I, I, I started joining women's movement, like providing training for uh, rural girls, rural women who were forced to find jobs in the city. For example, we provided different life skills training, we provided different um, empowerment training and I find that very meaningful because for rural girls, no education, no proper education and forced to find job in the city and I work a lot on the women's uh, or on the women issues like providing gender training uh, for students, for rural women, for industrial workers significant difference about women's situations today and the past? Well, you might expect me to say that women's situation today is much better compared to the past, but I don't think I can say so because actually uh, what's really happening in this country is like a wave of different waves. Women started to be struggling with their freedoms and that happened until 98 because women also joined uh, during the reformations movement and then i think 98 until early 2000s i think we enjoyed a lot of freedom but unfortunately slowly 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 in the blessing of religious teachings and slowly started to send back women to the house slowly started to send back women to be domesticated. The situation today is even worse than this group of traditionalists, this group of fundamentalists using women to have a bill and unfortunately it was passed to be discussed under the National Legislative Program 2020 and the bill says very clearly that women's place is in the house. That 
women. Main role is as wife and mother. What I like to say to to the girls and to the women, I would like to remind you that the freedoms you are enjoying now, at the cost of many foremothers and who struggled, who fought for the freedoms of women in this country. So please kindly don't take it for granted. Our struggle uh, is still long, long way to go. We should continue and never give up. I am Anna Marciana and this is my voice on hashtag to the girls.